No, because I'm an intro in the studio with clip and stuff. Linda, I, I'm delighted to meet you. Uh, you are so very admired for your ability. And you know, a long time ago, I worked with Peter Breck, and he told me that you were the most beautiful woman he'd ever met, inside, oh, inside and out. Oh, that's sweet. Is that nice? Well, nice. Big Valley. Right? Oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I was well, my brother. What did you expect me to say? <laughs> <laughs> I read an article in People magazine. I just hope that this was correct. You said that that Crystal, the character on Dynasty, that. You were concerned because she dealt emotionally rather than with her head, and you said that you'd been there, and you hoped that the character had a chance to develop. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Do you think she has developed? Crystal. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a long process. Um, it takes a while because people who are emotional and sentimental feel so much like they're coming from the right place. It's really hard to um, to change what you think because it seems sort of cruel. But actually, in order to have wisdom, you need a good balance between your heart and your mind. And um, none of that happens overnight, and it would be foolish to think that Crystal could suddenly uh, be in this family and all of a sudden everything falls into place and she's got it all down. The thing I like about a continuing show is that you see her struggle. Mm. Um, she gets on the track and she goes pretty good, and then she really gets off. She gets confused Don't by her emotions. and. And that's what's so nice. I like it. I think it's real, realistic. But have you been there in your own life? Oh, sure. <laughs> have you sure? Is it a long process for you as well, then? Years, yeah, years. And I'm not even sure that, that I'm at a place where I know all that I want to know. I know now that I know very little. <laughs> you know, the more you know, the more you find out you don't know. You, uh, you say you're very disappointed in, in the fact that your marriage to Stan Herman didn't work out. But the, was it because you chose a career? Was that the reason no, you chose to work? No, I've, I've never had a problem in any way with, with my marriage just because of my career. That has been the last of the problems. Because I've always done exactly what made me happy. And um, to me, it's very fulfilling to, to be a wife and a partner. And, and it's very exciting. And it was... was uh, more than, than, than enough. It's just that I had a lot of things within me I had to, to grow up quite a bit. And um, to discover myself, I really never really, I, I grew, grew older, but I never really grew up in my mind in some ways. I had a lot of dreams that, that were very childlike that I had to straighten out. Hmm. You were painfully shy when you were little. Yeah, well, really. Has it been hard to overcome? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, because it's going against what you're feeling. Um, shy people really would rather sort of be in the background and not really stand out. And here I am in a profession where people are saying, what do you think and whatever. And, and it amazed me for years that anybody cared to ask me what I thought. You know, I thought, well, what, do they, what do they want me to say? I didn't understand um, what an incredible opportunity it was to, to verbalize how you feel about life and things. So now you're beginning to do that. And in time, with, with me having to do it, because when I was younger, it was the best way I could possibly make money. Uh, my father died when we didn't have much money, so it was a wonderful opportunity. So I had to overcome it, which was really lovely. Do you, um, do you, what makes you happy? Is it, when people say you're beautiful, does that make you happy? Well, it's always nice to have a compliment. Do you know what I mean? It makes me happy if people say um, they like my cooking, if they say I've been a good friend, if they say um, you make me happy, um, I enjoy watching you. All those things make me happy. What about on the other hand, what makes you sad? Are there things about people and their behavior that depress you as well? Oh, sure. Um, let's see, what makes me sad? Um, People, what makes me the saddest is that people won't go for their dreams. I think that's really sad. I know that opportunities come to us in our life sometimes in kind of funny ways. And I think a lot of people want to go for it, but they're afraid. They're afraid of failing. And because they're afraid of failing, they stay back and they don't get the chance. And then later they say, I wished I'd done it, you know? And there are a lot of people with a lot of dreams in them that are realistic, that could be fulfilled and they they just don't have the courage to fail 
And you have to know that even if you fail, this is something you're going to learn that's going to be so wonderful out of it that you get a gift anyway. And I, I protected myself for many years against being the fool and, and, and being reserved and not wanting to do anything that wasn't perfect, that I just really stopped my life. And that's, that's sad, I think. A good friend of mine, David Hartman, has the same theory. He says risks are so important. Yeah. You have to be willing to take them. I agree. How about children in your life? You don't, do you have any children? No. No, that was one of my dreams, too. And um, the way I see it, I still have time. Yeah. <laughs> Science is helping yeah. us. Huh? Yeah, it's true. It still, it still can work out. There are people who say, oh, does this bother you? Because they say, well, you know, you're over 40 and you're so beautiful. Well, I'm so, not over 40 yet. I'm approaching 40. Appro but mm -hmm. still, does it bother you that, they, that people find it hard to believe that a woman can be beautiful and be 40? Well, it bothers me because I don't think it's very bright. I don't know why a woman can't be beautiful in 40 or 50 or 60 or 70. I don't know why you can't be uh, incredible every day of your life, regardless of whether you're 12 or 90. Um, I have a woman uh, that I learned numerology from, Dr. Juno Jordan, that's 97. Mm. And I talked to her on the phone. I so admire her. She gives me such pleasure. I, you know, I have such respect for her. I think she looks wonderful. I, she's inspirational. And I think that, that women can stop saying that their life is behind them and start saying that it's ahead of them. That's great. What a great attitude. Are you loving working with John Forsyth?